up next is Emily Callahan. She is the Chief Marketing and Chief Experience Officer at ALSAC, which is the American Lebanese Syrian Associated Charities, the fundraising and awareness organization, which everyone is known as St. Jude's Children's Research Hospital. Emily has dramatically grown the relevance of the brand to iconic status in addition to celebrating many years of making it um, in the business. Um, one of the things that Emily just shared with us is that they had been named Fast Company's Best Companies to Work For, for Innovators. And St. Jude has been in the news recently uh, with everything going on with Chadwick. And so we're really honored to have Emily with us today. Um, welcome, Emily, to joining us and, and to the show. We're excited that you're here. Oh, I'm so honored to be here. Thank you, Maha. It's great to be with you. Hey, Gary, how are you? I'm well, Emily. Thank you so much for being here. Actually, before we get into all of this stuff, just to mix it up a little bit today, because I think um, always trying to feed the constituents and reading the comments on Twitter. What about just your personal story? You know, take us back, like, you know, what kind of girl were you growing up, interests, and, and how did this become a career? Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's see if I <laughs> yeah, a little curveball off the, uh, off the bat. You and I expected it. So let's see if I can hang. Um, <laughs> you know, um, I, I will tell you, I was always a really empathetic kid. Mm -hmm. And so my, um, couple stories I'll tell you. So my father was a funeral home director when I was a kid. Wow. So I'm probably a weird one. My mother was a nurse, but I think the story that prepared me best for this job was when I was a little girl, my father took me to see the movie Bambi. Mm. And um, I cried so hard and so loud that the theater manager came in and said, sir, we're going to have to ask you to leave. The wow. other patrons cannot enjoy the movie because <laughs> your daughter is so disruptive. And so I've always had this deep heart and empathy. And so I can remember right after I got this job about a decade ago, and it was a, a pretty big deal that our CEO asked me to do it. I was really young. And he said, I think this is the perfect job for you. You were born with this empathy and understanding kind of tangential to the medical field but this desire to, to help people be a part of something. Um, so that's it, I'm a small town girl from Oklahoma. I pinch myself that I'm in this seat all the time and I'm, I'm super honored to be here because I feel like our whole purpose is, is helping connect this world to this fundamental human truth that we believe that all kids should have a chance to grow up. That's yes. what I get to do every day is help millions of people fall in love with that idea. So I'm happy to be here. Well, listen, a couple quick things. We are kindred spirits as I thought we were from afar because I cried heavy in the movie theater at Lion King. Oh. The only difference was I was a senior in high school and on a pretty hot date for senior year, Gary, and pretty much changed the outcome of my upside in that scenario. But I still, I don't regret it because that is sad. When he nudges, I just can't, I can't deal. So anyway. You're my person. And I, if she didn't appreciate you, hey, now it's all about the emotionally connected man. You were ahead of your time. I agree. Fun fact, she, had, she admitted that was a key mistake in her decision making as an 18 year old. So I'm happy about that. So let's talk, let's talk, about, um, let's talk about navigating. And you, I, from, again, from afar, because we haven't had a chance to jam too much. I think you've brought an enormous amount of contemporary energy to what is an iconic brand you know, in a lot of ways, that's what I want to do in my life. I want to eventually buy businesses that were iconic and, and refurbished. So I've really admired watching. Um, how's that been? What, what's needed to do that? Do you see that you're, you're pulling that off? Is it fun? Is it, what, thoughts? Oh, it's been the ride of a lifetime. I mean, a couple of things I'll say, and I, I love your approach to that. And I teach a lot about this. So the brand, for those who knew it was iconic to them, but for many, it wasn't. And so we literally measure this out and, and a month ago reached iconic brand status in the same way, the same stringent measures that any brand would do. Um, but one of the things I love about you and it's how we started is you have such a, a research-based mindset. And I don't even mean research in the dorky data way. I mean, you're a listener. You sit and you listen to what people are saying and thinking. And so I can remember when I was interviewed for this job, they said, you know, hey, we already have awareness at the levels of Coca-Cola but we really didn't because we were asking questions in a way that would give us the answer we wanted, not really digging into research and asking people, what do you know about the mission? What do you understand? How relevant is it to you? And then we really listened to that data and some of it was hard to hear. We also weren't afraid to call the baby ugly. If you looked at the marketing before, there was some powerful stuff in it, but it was all over the place. It wasn't consistent. It didn't break through. And then aren't we, we all as CMOs and people in this industry talk about ourselves as storytellers, but man, I think we fail to take the time to get it right. 
and it's all about short and instant and one word and a meme, well, we broke all those truths because what we realized is that people didn't understand our one of a kind business model. So we totally rewrote our messages and the most powerful two things we did is we talked about the why. So here families never receive a bill. We pay for treatment, travel, housing, and food. That was our message and we were so proud of ourselves when we wrote it and people said, well, that's nice. We forgot to tell them why. And so we said, the reason we do that is because all a family should worry about is helping their child live. Well, then boom, people from every background, every ethnicity, every age said, of course. So that why, and the last mm -hmm. thing we did, Carrie, and I think this is the key to make any brand great. And you know this, we talk about customers and advocates. And whatever. We just made everybody who works here accountable to it. So the person who answers the phone at the front desk, the CEO, my, my tech support here today, we, they have the same goal I do. We're all accountable for the brand. And we knew we got it right when other people started sharing our messages and telling their authentic stories. So that's kind of been our journey in a nutshell and the keys to the kingdom were research, listen, take the time to get your story right and then empower everybody to be storytellers, which totally parlays into what we're talking about today with the gamers and the content creators. Well, uh -huh. let's, let's talk about that. I mean, one of the things that people might be asking is what is St. Jude's <laughs> doing in the area of esports? And I think it's an incredible, you know, journey that you guys are on. And I would love you to share with everybody. Yeah, I'm happy to. We've got to chat about this a little bit. So, you know, this St. Jude doesn't exist without the support of millions of donors, period. I mean, 80% of the money it takes to operate St. Jude has to come from donations. That's totally opposite than every other hospital that gets most of their money from insurance recoveries. Insurance doesn't really want to cover much of what we do. So we have to help millions of people fall in love with this business. So I remember sitting in my office and this really talented staffer came in one day and he was like, hey, look, you're the CMO, but I got to tell you, we're missing out. That the gaming industry by all reports is now larger than movie and music combined. And he's an avid gamer and a really brilliant innovator. And he said, I think we're missing out. And I was like, all right, show me. Go get a team together and come back with a business plan. And so that was back in 2014. And fast forward now, we've raised over 30 million. We have um, active content creators that engage with us that basically we empower to go tell our mission from over 30 countries and active fundraisers coming from over 100 countries. It's been transformative. But then again, it's not because we I heard people talking about they're athletes, they're all that. Well, they're just like us. They believe kids should have a chance to grow up. They just have unbelievable global platforms to tell that story. And especially those who've come here and met with the patients and families, man, they're, they're advocates, they get it. Yeah, we've seen the streamers come to visit the kids. They're, they're actively using their platforms and their pages and their social media presence to really help tell the St. Jude story. For real, what, I mean, we've what learned the impact so much. On the kids? What has been the impact on the kids? Oh man, I mean, so you know, we were founded by an entertainer. And right. we have so many amazing celebrities and influencers who come through here. But it's off the chart when certain gamers come in. I mean, when Dr. Lupo comes to your campus, the gamers are like, no way. And then I love the interactions where they're beating him and playing games and besting him. But to me, Ben, Dr. Lupo is such an amazing example of that authentic connection. That's a person who understands they have a massive platform. But coming here changed him. And it didn't just change him, it changed his wife. You've seen his son in the streams. Like there's a deep connection that happens. And, and Dr. Lupo is just one example. But, you know, these are kids who are, they're just kids and they don't want to be defined by their cancer. And so when they can do what they love and play games and when their heroes, a Dr. Lupo, a Chadwick Boseman come here and they talk hero to hero, man, do I have the best job on the planet getting to watch those powerful moments because that's what life's about. When, when you were, in that position where this gentleman comes and says, We're, you're missing the boat, and you go through this journey of somebody in, that you respect or you're willing to listen to gives you an observation of an opportunity, and you start going down that path. As you went through that path with gaming, was there a moment early on where you were like, oh, okay, there's something here? Because I, I tend to really enjoy the path of like trying to figure out new things, and sometimes they don't have the stake and other times they do. Was there something early on in the gaming journey for you personally that allowed you to say, okay, I think there's something here? It's a great question. Um, first of all, I'm a big believer. Your people are your greatest asset. And that's one of the most fun parts of my job is people come in and say, hey, what about, hey, could we? 
That's why I think we said Fast Company named us, you know, best place to work for innovators. So honestly, he had me at the jump, mm. partly because I'm a data dork. And so when he walked <laughs> in and said, you know, I know we get hyped up about sports. We have all this long sports history, right? All these NBA players come through here. And he was like, do you realize that these live gaming events, right, can fill stadiums three times over? Like, this is a huge opportunity. And then showed a few of the demographics, the global nature of it. it, it I was like, wow. And then to be able to see them come here to the campus and watch the way the patients responded to them and then just see that built out. And then when you take it into these live streams and forums, right, from going from Guardian Con when it was Guardian Con to, to just on Twitch and, and you see the way people engage with the mission, it's powerful. And it's exciting to us because a lot of it is younger. So it's next generation falling in love with this mission through what they're already in love with in gaming. But man, he had me from the jump with the stats. They were blow away. And it's only borne out in a more powerful way when we see it come to life. Well, I was just going to ask about um, when you talked a little bit earlier about like your leadership style and, and like, I mean, I, I see when we, we, we chatted kind of pregame, uh, I'm like you and Gary think a lot alike in terms of empathy and leadership and being vulnerable and how you talk about things. What is the way in which you're working with partners to, to bring that into the equation, especially when it comes to dealing with these children? Mm. A great question. I'm, I'm humbled by it. I mean, I'll just say, um, you know, our goal is to tap into the humanity and the compassion that exists in all of us. Mm -hmm. um, our goal is to help everyone take whatever it is they're passionate about. Um, in this case, it's gaming. It could be sports. It could be motorcycle ride. I mean, you name it. We have runners. We have people of all backgrounds. But when they put a fundamental why to their passion, that's when magic happens. And so that power of partnership, right? I mean, Dr. Lupo is already successful. He's making money, he's connecting with fans, but it's a whole deeper level when you connect authentically around this idea of kids and all kids should have a chance to grow up. And some of it's because we can relate, man. Some of us had great childhoods and we're grateful for it. Some of us had terrible, some of us know people in our own lives touched by cancer. And some of us know firsthand what it's like to watch a child go through cancer. So that, that powerful, empowering, awesome creators and gamers and empowering them to fall in love with this mission and tell about it in their own ways, that's where the magic happens. And frankly, that's where the results happen. We reach people as marketers I could never afford to reach on my own. We raise millions of dollars we couldn't do on our own because he's an authentic, all the, they're, they're authentic connectors to the mission. So when they say this matters, people sit up and they take notice and we fund more research and we save more lives. Yeah. And, and how big is the team at St. Jude that's working on esports? And are you guys growing? What do you guys have coming up next? Yeah. It's, um, it's a, right now a small and mighty, but it's a dedicated team. And I think that's what matters. This isn't somebody's side job. This isn't a passion on the end. This is a dedicated team that sits and thinks about this industry, this opportunity, future growth. So, so at ALSAC, we, are, we have the saying, right? We don't just wait to be disrupted. We look ahead and we try to anticipate those disruptions and embrace and seize them and lead the trends. And so this is a group that's constantly saying, okay, hey, what if, what if? And you know, this is an interesting arena. We have a lot of interesting and difficult conversations about what's appropriate for a brand with children, what's good growth, what's not. I mean, this is an industry that's growing and, and having some growing pains too. So it's a team in an area we're growing. We have big plans to do a lot more with this industry moving forward. And bottom line, it's because our mission has to grow, right? We are expanding globally. We are trying to save more children worldwide. Here in the United States, we've taken the overall childhood cancer survival rate from 20 to 80 percent. Still, that means one in five children won't survive. And, and it's the opposite. It's four out of five, right? So this is a key path for us to reach people around the world to help us change it. Yeah, a lot of people don't think of nonprofits first when you're thinking about engaging in, in this, with this community. How has that been either a challenge or an opportunity for you? Well, you just asked me one of my favorite questions. <laughs> I, um, it's time to sit up and pay attention. The next yeah. generations have told us that purpose matters. They're willing to quit their job. They're willing to move. They're willing to take less pay to do something that matters. And I think this global crisis, it's a multi-part crisis, right? COVID, social justice, and economic crisis has said, hey, we want to work hard and do something that matters. And so there's already, I mean, one in 12 people work in nonprofits. It's a huge industry. We're making a difference. And shame on us, we haven't always been as innovative as we can. But I think the power of partnerships, 
nonprofit, for profit, really creative fun things like this. This is how we change the world. And, and by the way, all companies should sit up and take notice because that's what the next gens have expected. They're not just going to buy a great product. They're going to buy the one that's attached to purpose. They're going to get engaged with the brand that's authentic. They want to change the world through their consumerism as well. And we'd love to partner and help people do that because by the way, it drives results. I can show you case studies that say when you partner with our brand, it can drive sales, it can drive revenue, but it really most importantly drives recruitment and retention and it can drive brand love. So we don't just show up to say, hey, give to us. We show up to say, let's collectively marshal all of our resources together and change the world for people who need us or dogs or the planet or social justice. You got my drift. Yeah, Emily, it's so good to hear from you. So much.